morning, everybody. It's uh, Rebecca Jennings here from Global Reviews. I'm Principal Client Advisor here at Global Reviews. Thank you very much for dialing in this morning. Um, we have a session this morning for half an hour or so on our uh, very recent research on current accounts, looking both at how customers go around and find uh, current accounts uh, in the market, uh, but also then looking at the experience they have when they find a brand, uh, looking at the experience they have actually on brand websites and comparing that to uh, the rest of the market. So what we're going to do this morning is a half hour review of how consumers find a current account and then as I say looking at the experience they then have when they actually uh, look at brands and who's performing best in that uh, engagement, who's top of consumers' uh, searches when they find a current account, who gets through their shortlists, who gets onto their final uh, selection choice, and then looking at the websites themselves, who delivers the best experience from initial engagement with the website through to researching the product, through to uh, potentially, in some cases, actually applying for the, the current account online. So that's what we're going to do this morning. Very quickly, for those of you who have not come across us before, Global Reviews are a, a leading international data analytics and advisory company uh, spanning the UK and Australasia and also uh, into Europe. Uh, we work across a number of industries, um, working with the leading brands such as Lloyd's, Nationwide, Aviva, Bank of Ireland in financial services, but also across energy with companies like SSE, SSE uh, Electricity and EDF. We also work within uh, the betting industry, companies like Ladbrokes and Coral, um, and across uh, a variety of other types of uh, insurance um, uh, companies, and say insurance and financial services. So. We work with a lot of uh, the leading brands in the market, and we work to see how effective digital marketing in each of these industries is. As I say, how consumers find brands in these industries, what brands do they research, and then how effective these brands are at actually converting consumers when they come to their websites. This is a research methodology that's conducted across both online and mobile. What we're going to talk about today is specifically about the online channel, about the, the laptops, the desktop channel, but the research is also conducted uh, across, across mobile. And it's a very lifelike methodology. The consumers that go through our research, which is supplemented by our in-house best practice analysis, are real consumers uh, who are in market for this product. They're in their own homes using their own technology. It's exactly the experience they would have if they were actually doing it for themselves uh, looking for that product. And as you can see, as I say, we work across a number of industries, a lot of major brands. We're really helping set best practice standards across these organizations on an international basis. So what are we going to talk about today for the next half hour or so? We're going to focus on these three steps of the customer journey and look at the experience that consumers are having across these three steps. We're going to look at the discover phase uh, which is an, analyzed by a product called the Digital Marketing Effectiveness Study, which looks at how consumers find a product in a market. It starts as a blank screen study, and consumers are asked to go and find uh, a brand that suits their needs in current accounts. It's usually around 300 consumers in market for that product. So we then track everything they do, and we can see how they make their decisions. We're then going to look at the sales effectiveness points here, the consider and act phases of this decision cycle. When consumers actually come to current account brand websites, come to financial services websites, how effectively they actually engage with those consumers? Do they uh, show them initially that they might have products that suit their needs? How do they help consumers match products to their needs? And how easy is it to actually go through and apply for uh, the product? So we're going to look at those three steps across the customer decision process. As I say, we're going to look at the DME and the DSE. So very quickly, the methodologies for both of these, just so you, you know where this data has come from. The DME is very much about how consumers find a current account. It's the blank screen study. So consumers are asked to go to their own technology, go to their computers in their own homes, and told, please just go and do as much research as you 
feel necessary to find the current account that suits your needs. We ask them some questions before and after and during that experience. So we ask them things like uh, their initial uh, awareness, what uh, unprompted, so who do they know of uh, in the market, um, both unprompted and then at the end, who are they aware of, so who they learnt about in the journey. Uh, who's their initial preference? So if you sat them down and said, make a decision now without doing research, who would you choose? So who's top of mind to start with? We then track what they actually do. We download a little piece of technology to their browser so we can see exactly where they go in terms of brands, but also in terms of aggregators, uh, advice sites, uh, also in terms of what search terms they use, uh, how are they actually searching and where are they going. We can see where they get, where they visit. We then ask them to shortlist uh, a number of brands. So who would make it to a shortlist for a bit more uh, investigation, having done uh, some initial research. And then who finally would be the preferred provider at this point. And obviously at the, through that journey, we can see how uh, effective brands marketing is, how uh, consumers brands are, are being attracted or attracting consumers to their brands, but also then who are they losing in that process? Who visits you but doesn't choose you? Who shortlists you but doesn't prefer you? So who, where, where are you losing consumers and who are you losing them to? So that's the first piece of uh, those three circles I showed you a moment ago, the discover phase. And then we go into measuring the customer experience consumers have on the sites themselves when they get to them, the digital sales effectiveness. This is mapping the journey that they would naturally take, again, when they were using to purchase a product. Again, it's a lifelike methodology. They're in their own homes on their own technology. A uh, set of consumers are asked to go to uh, each, uh, go to a different brand. It's a different set of consumers for every brand. And it's up to 50 consumers per brand um, if they're a client. So consumers are asked to go and conduct a number of tasks, uh, find products, find specific uh, elements of products, apply for the current account, and they're asked a number of questions about that experience. That is then supplemented by data points from uh, our own best practice audit. We run uh, around 350 criteria best practice audit uh, conducted by the experts within global reviews, yes, no questions across the journey. So we have at all points across the journey both data from the consumer but also data from the best practice audit, um, which obviously because the benchmark includes a competitor view, so you'll see later there's data across the brands in the market across each of these steps. So initial engagement, do you look as if you've got a product that suits my needs? Uh, how do you show what products you've got? How can I find the product range? Uh, are there any calculators to help me understand what's best for me? So going into evaluating options, what are my specific needs? Um, and how do I understand that your product suits my specific needs? Then facilitating that decision, okay, I found a product that suits my needs, but you know, actually I found one here, 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 and here. There are five different products across different brands. Why am I choosing you? Can I compare it externally? Can I contact you if I've got an issue? Why would I choose you as my provider? And then the actual act phase, well, how do I apply? Do I do it online? Why would I do it online? Is it quick? Is it easy? Is it safe? Is it secure? Would I rather uh, pick up the phone? Would I, can I go into a branch? And, and how do I do that? And then actually the form itself where relevant, uh, can I complete the form online, what kind of help and support is there to encourage me to do that. So those are the two products we are going to discuss this morning um, across the current account journey. So if we start with the DME, I say we start very early in the process and say, well, what's your preference before you've even started this journey? If you had to make a decision now before doing any research, who would you choose? as a new provider of a current account. And do remember these are consumers who are in market to take out or change their current account. So they are people who are thinking about this as a decision. So first thing to say here, actually, it's, it's a pretty widely spread bunch. Uh, we've got a number of brands in this market. It is a, a competitive market uh, in the UK. Um, so you've got a number of brands uh, in there. Nobody's getting huge swathe of the market at this point. We're not getting 20, 30, 40 percent of the market going with a brand as we do in some other markets. So um, health insurance, for example, uh, we do get uh, bigger preferences. Bat in betting, actually, we get bigger, bigger preferences. But certainly within current accounts, there's a widespread initial preference. So that would suggest that, let's say, very competitive and potentially a lot of uh, 
potential in there for the marketing uh, effectiveness to, to change consumers' minds. Most people had a preference at this point. Only 9% didn't. Um, majority of people said, okay, if you made me choose, I'd, I'd choose a brand. And you saw 13% choose Santander, 11% Lloyd's, and 11% Barclays are the sort of top three at the moment. But plenty of scope in there, I think, for, for change because there's a very widespread uh, initial preference. I said then we then track exactly what they do. So we ask them to go off and do some research to figure out what current account would actually suit their needs. Unsurprisingly, 70% of consumers start at a search engine. Um, that's uh, pretty standard with most of the studies we run. Most people start at a, a search engine. Most of us start a search engine to do any sort of research uh, these days, even if we know the URL. 34% then went direct to a brand. Uh, so they, they either found, discovered a brand through the search process, or as I say, typed the URL in and then went 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 to it. Uh, another additional 10% did the journey of aggregator to a brand. So they used an aggregator, but they then decided to actually go and do some more research on the brand site itself um, after having looked at that aggregator. So it's showing the power of the aggregators, but still in this particular market, the brands are very strong as well. We have other markets, again, where the aggregators are much stronger, where the aggregators are the first place people go. Here, people are tending to look at the brands as well as the aggregators. They want to see what the actual brand websites have to say. And where do they go? 25% of them go to Santander. We just saw earlier those are, that, that was a, the slightly the highest preference, so that's sort of coming through here as well. A quarter of consumers actually visiting the brand to see uh, whether it actually um, meets the needs that they have. 22% go to Barclays, um, which we, we saw earlier again uh, was, a, was a popular choice in terms of uh, initial choice, uh, initial pre-reference, um, pre-research choice. Um, and then we actually have Nationwide coming in here uh, at 18%. Um, they had a smaller original preference. They were just down at 8% in terms of initial preference behind Buckley's, Lloyd's, uh, Santander. Um, so actually creeping up a little here slightly. But again, we're looking at a fairly widespread spread of visits. Um, again, the, 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 the visits are not concentrated across two or three different brands. We're seeing quite a wide spread of people visiting. 15% visiting Lloyd's, again that's a little bit lower perhaps than we might have expected given their pre-reference, uh, pre-reference, pre-research preference. Sometimes we see very preferred brands at the beginning not performing very well in terms of visits because people think, okay, well they'll make my shortlist anyway. I know the brand, I know it reasonably well, I don't actually need to go to the website at this point to know that it would make my shortlist. So we'll see in a minute if that's the case for Lloyd's. And as you can see, it would appear that that is the case. So we're now just that starting to get that funnel effect you saw earlier, the, the funnel icon. We're starting to say, OK, you've done the research. You've looked around at the aggregators. Who at this point would you shortlist? And this is a list of consumer list of brands that people would spend a little bit more time looking at. They've seen enough to say, actually, they probably have something that suits my needs, but I'm not sure yet. So. They would make out of my shortlist for brands to look at a little bit more in depth. 47% of consumers at this point citing Santander. So obviously they've been very effective through the research point research journey this far to convince consumers that they might have something, and this is a combination of SEO and PPC strategies that people have seen uh, through their search journey, but also the aggregator journey. Uh, what have they seen when they've gone to the aggregators, but then also the initial impressions when they come to the website. Does it look as if it might suit my needs? Consumers probably haven't done an awful lot of in-depth research at this point, but they're starting to get an impression they might suit my needs. Closely followed by Nationwide on 41%. Again, I managed to push up from quite a significant pre-research preference to getting on to 41% of people's shortlists. Closely followed by Lloyd's. Uh, again here, um, again coming up, we've seen them all through. Interestingly, Barclays has dropped down. You've seen, you've seen Barclays at the beginning was uh, sort of joint second in terms of uh, a pre-research research preference, but it's already now moving its way down the list as people do a bit more research. It's not uh, up there with the sort of first, second, and third anymore. It's dropped down um, in favour of uh, certainly Nationwide and Halifax. So we're already seeing 
some changes, even when we just get to the shortlist piece. It's interesting now to see why people short, shortlist brands, and then we'll look at a moment as to why they make the final decision that they make and how that changes. So why would brands reach a shortlist? The shortlist uh, is often a case of um, familiarity. Again, we see that across most of the brands, most of the industries that we, we uh, research. Familiarity with a name gets you on a shortlist. Functionality in this particular market, current accounts, consumers are looking for online banking. 53% said, I put that brand on my, my shortlist because it was obvious from my short piece of research that I've done that they allow for online banking. Extremely important uh, to get to a shortlist, so as well as familiarity, as well as starting to think about, okay, products offers were fairly easy to understand, and the website helped me compare options. I've got to this stage, I've shortlisted them because I've done enough research to understand that their products seem to be fairly simple. They look as if it's something that suits my needs, probably, and they allow for online banking. And I'm familiar with them. I trust this brand. I know, I know this brand. So that's how you get to a short list. It isn't necessarily how you get to be onto the final selection, which we'll look at in a moment. So we've seen a little bit of movement around already. Santander uh, topping the original preference, and then obviously. Um, pushing on through, but we've also seen Barclays slip down again. So let's have a look at final preference, which I think is really interesting. And there actually also be some interesting movements over the last six months. The DME and DSE research is obviously uh, run on a rolling basis. Uh, the DSE, which we'll talk about in a moment, the benchmarking is normally run on a six monthly basis. Uh, current accounts DME uh, has historically been run on a round of quarterly basis. Going forward, it uh, will often be run on a monthly basis. So it's a snapshot um, at, at, in, a, in time of the marketing that's going on at that point. But it's obviously uh, something that is really interesting to see on a month-by-month -month basis, um, putting that couple of hundred consumers through it every uh, month through through the year obviously gives you two and a half thousand consumers by the end, which gives you a significant amount of, uh, of insight. But looking here, particularly just at the last uh, sort of a six monthly uh, comparison, because that's where the DSE uh, does, to give us a sort of par comparison, we've seen over the last couple of months, the top brands have remained the same. Santander pushes all the way through from initial preference through to visits, through to final selection. 20% of consumers in the July wave of this research chose Santander as their final uh, final brand. 20% also chose Nationwide. So Santander and Nationwide in this particular wave actually tying in terms of uh, final selection, which is interesting because you've seen Nationwide really move up that selection list when you started it. They were, when we looked at sort of initial preference, they were fifth in terms of initial preference. They then managed to get up onto the visited list um, and then push them slowly up onto the short list. But finally, they've actually managed to get all the way through to the final preference. So they're clearly bringing their brand to consumers' awareness quite effectively and convincing consumers that they have uh, a brand that, that meets their needs. Lloyd's, uh, then a little bit further down, you've got a drop off to the next wave of Lloyd's and Barclays and Halifax. Um, getting around 10, 13% of the market. You've seen some changes over the last six months, and that is inevitable with the, with the DME particularly, because as I say, it's a snapshot of essentially what's marketing uh, is going on out there in the market, particularly the, the brand that's been hit by that over the last six months that appear to be First Direct, who were the choice of 14% back in January, but have dropped back down to, to 6% failing to convince consumers this time around that they have a product that suits their needs, people moving to the other brands. So as you can see, while Santander is a sort of say, a steady brand across the, the funnel, that's not the case when you get below that. You see some movement. Barclays has definitely dropped down. Nationwide has, uh, has made a success. So why are people choosing this brand at this point? We saw a moment ago it, the primary driver to get on the short list was around for online banking. Actually, when it comes to that final decision, when consumers say, OK, I've got this shortlist, but which one of these is really the one that suits me? It is very much about best offers and accounts for my needs. So consumers thinking, well, what do I actually need? What is it in terms of a current account provision that I actually require for my day-to-day -day banking? 
Yes, I require online banking, but I need to be sure that all the other features and functions suit my needs too. So it's extremely important for the websites to communicate to consumers their products suit the consumer's specific needs. It's not a generic product. We have products that suit your specific needs, and we can show you why that is the case. And we'll talk about that in a moment when we look at the DSE and how important that is. So shortlisting, functionality, brand, to get to that final choice, you've got to co-consumers that you have the best product and offer for their needs in an easy to understand way. The options are easier to understand is our third option here. It's also interesting just to wrap the, the DM up, DME up, to look at some of those funnels and the ratios as people consumers go through the choice, uh, go through this funnel. Where are brands losing consumers? Where are they gaining them? Who's being most effective at conversion? There's a lot of data on this slide. I'd just like to draw attention to a couple of pieces. Firstly, that recall, that unprompted recall we have at the top. So when we ask consumers, who do you know of as providing current accounts? Just 23% of consumers mentioned nationwide, pretty low in terms of awareness. But actually, then, creating um, a lot of uh, engagement as they go through the process. So 18% visited them, so obviously they're doing something reasonably well in terms of uh, getting their brand out there and aware into the market. 41% of consumers shortlisted nationwide. That's against 47% who shortlisted the, the brand leader here, Santander. So they're getting, nationwide are getting a pretty much all very close shortlisting position, uh, but coming from a smaller awareness base, and can also come from a smaller visited. And then finally, Santander and Nationwide actually head-to-head uh, -head in the final selection. So while Santander are obviously doing a very good job through the process, Nationwide are definitely um, doing an equally good job, but coming from a smaller base. So definitely within the SEO and the PPC and the aggregators, raising awareness, but also then within the website itself, doing something to, to convince consumers that they meet uh, their needs. They're also doing the best in terms of conversion from shortlist to preference. So what percentage of those who shortlisted them actually preferred them? The percentage that's highest for Nationwide, and it's a little bit lower, actually, for Lloyd's, um, even though they're coming in with a higher, uh, a much higher unprompted recall. So it's really interesting to see how uh, you might see smaller brands here, or what consumers think of as smaller brands in this market, coming through after a piece of research, after consumers have spent some time doing some research. So that's the marketing piece. That's the first piece of this discover phase. Then, as I say, we look at the websites themselves. When consumers actually come to the site and do a in-depth piece of research, going through what products have you got, can I find one that suits my needs, uh, why would I actually choose you? The DSC takes consumers through that journey, and as I say, then combines it with the best practice audit that that uh, Global Reviews themselves do. And the output of that is a score, a score that uh, shows how easy it is for consumers to uh, engage with you, how well you make consumers want to buy from you, essentially want to engage with you. We would generally say a score of around 55 was OK. It's kind of basically beating consumers' needs. Uh, anything lower than that means there are quite some gaps in terms of how uh, you are consuming, um, how you are uh, meeting consumers' needs. So if we have a look now moving on to the DSE, thinking about how well you meet consumers' needs if you remember, right the way through initial engagement, through to what have you got, why would I choose you, how do I engage with you, how do I actually apply for this product. These are the brands that we benchmarked in the latest wave in, in Q3 in July. And you can see the scores range from a low from um, AIB, uh, Allied Irish, of 33, up to 61% for, for Lloyd. So a couple of things to say about this is it's quite a widespread uh, market. We have some that are a lot closer than this. Um, it's a market where we are getting a few scores over over the 55, but not particularly uh, 
significantly. Um, it's not the highest scoring market we have. The highest scoring market, uh, the, the highest score we have uh, in another market is around 68%. So it's still um, it's not the highest scoring market we have, although a couple of them are doing not too badly out of this market. But there's certainly an awful lot of improvement that could be made in terms of how these brands are meeting consumers' needs. Um, uh, this is a, an always interesting one to show because I just like this one because it shows that there are industry as well as brand pains. It's not the case that every brand is performing differently and that, that every brand does does different things. Uh, it is the case that there are some brands that do some things well, some brands that do some things badly, but often uh, you often find a cluster uh, in these, these research. So uh, as you can see, generally speaking, pretty much all of the brands do fairly poorly at facilitating decisions. The highest is around 50%. That's that piece about, OK, I've got, a, I've got a product here that seems to suit my needs. But OK, two or three of you have got something product, what, the same product, essentially. Why am I choosing you as a current account provider? So nobody in the market does that particularly well. Uh, we have a very uh, sort of range uh, across some of the other steps. Um, but again, the other thing is people not doing terribly well. Um, generally speaking, is evaluating options. How do I figure out whether your product suits my needs specifically? And that's what we're going to touch on now. We're going to touch on a couple of the key pains that come out of this journey. Obviously, there are uh, six different sort of categories across the Consider and Act phase, and there are scores below each of these. So there's an awful lot of data in this, an awful lot of pain, if you like. I just thought it would be interesting to highlight a couple, because a couple of these pains also reflect what we've just seen in the DME. Why did you choose this brand? If you remember, finally, the final choice was they had the best offer account, account and offer for my needs. So how do you, as a current account provider, help consumers find the product that suits their needs and help them understand that it is the best one out there? How do you convince consumers that you have the product that actually suits their needs? In this particular uh, DSE, um, none of the brands are doing that particularly well. As you can see, the matching products needs score all below 50%. No brand very effectively showing consumers what the products are and which one actually suits their needs and helping consumers understand why that might be. No brand doing a particularly great job of helping consumers compare products. A little bit better at this. Uh, some, some brands better than this, than this than others. But again, the brands are failing consumers in terms of the consumer demand to understand why your product meets my specific needs and help me understand which of your product options is the most appropriate for me. As I say, we ask consumers to undertake a number of tasks. And in this particular task, uh, we ask consumers to find um, a specific piece of information about a product. So a consumer might have a specific need for a uh, free overdraft, for example, or a um, uh, specific cost or specific facility to take money out abroad. So we ask consumers, actually, can you go and find a product that suits that need? And we know there is one on each website. We don't ask each I don't ask the, uh, websites to produce something we know they don't have. So we do obviously do our research, and we know that these brands, these products exist. So we ask consumers, can you go and find that particular product? On average, only around 62% of consumers are actually successful in finding that information. It's information we know is there, but actually consumers really struggle to find it when they go and delve around these particular brands. That means generally consumers are unsatisfied with this piece of research. Again, their average satisfaction rate is something that reaches 62-63%. Consumers are generally quite unsatisfied with the process of trying to find specific options and then compare them to figure out whether they've got the right one. So this is about communicating to consumers that this is a range of products we have, but let me help you as a brand figure out which one suits your needs the best. Let me give you some information about it that help you understand whether it ticks your boxes. So this is an example actually from Chase and from um, a, a, a different brand that's not in the, the benchmark, because as we saw, nobody in the benchmark does this particularly well, which is why it's really interesting for us as Global Reviews, because obviously we look at a lot of brands across a lot of markets, and it's often the case that the best practice actually comes from not within your market itself. It might be within the industry, but from a different country, but it might actually be without 
the, your industry completely. It might be a betting company that does something uh, particularly well. So in this particular case, it's Chase um, helping consumers try and understand, I want a checking account with, okay, basic features, okay, more value plus interest. I actually want, want this account to pay interest for me. Oh, I'm a student. I just want it just for students. So it's not getting into great depth at this point, not making asking consumers to make huge decisions, but just saying, actually, no, that's, that's really what I was looking for particularly. And then you see on the left, the information highlights the key features that that product comes with. So um, debit card, mobile banking, account alerts. And I see this tag here, most popular. So helping consumers going, OK, basic product we have. It's the most popular. This is it. OK, you're looking for something that's a bit more value, you're actually looking for something that has no fees. OK, let's come and have a look at the Ch Premier Plus checking. This, is, this gives you more value. And this is the extra reasons you would you would choose this. So starting to help users understand what I want and what is it you can you can give me. It's also very hard for most of these markets to actually compare the products. You might have four, five, six. You probably don't have hundreds. It's not like credit cards, but you probably have four, five, six maybe uh, current account options. And actually, it's very hard for consumers to compare those. An RBS actually make it uh, relatively simple. Uh, they have the most popular accounts here lying out on a sort of next to each other. Time and time again, you'll see uh, accounts on a sort of block one underneath each other, and it's very hard for consumers to compare those. So here they've got them side by side. You can see straight across the key features, the fees, uh, features of mobile banking, overdrafts, emergency cash. So key features being brought out, and then you can click on uh, lots of them to see more information. So you click on lifestyle. And now you've got information saying, OK, this product gives us a family passes for the National Trust Day Out, gives you taste card membership. So you can make a decision, OK, those things you're already paying for, they come in this current account, so maybe that would suit my needs. So very much more simple as a consumer to look at what it is that each of these offer. Um, Amex actually do a really good side-by-side -side comparison of their credit cards along the same lines. Um, it was also worth, worth looking at um, in terms of to say, showing consumers what you've got, does it see my needs, but also let me compare uh, the products as a consumer and say all the time it's really difficult to do that. Then the other key pain I just wanted to highlight here is that facilitation decisions piece. We're in a competitive, largely almost commoditized, increasingly commoditized market. The products uh, in terms of current accounts are very similar, certainly in terms of consumers' eyes they are, even though when you delve into the features they might might be quite different, but certainly in terms of consumers, consumers think they're all the same. Um, so as a brand, it's very, very important for you to make some effort to say, well, no, why would you choose us? Why are we different? What is it about my brand that makes me your choice? Um, can you make it? Can we make it easy for you to contact us if you've got a problem? If you've got a query, does this really suit my needs? Can I take it out over the phone? Can I take out a current account for my child who's under 16? OK, let's make it really easy for you to talk to us. And some brands, as you can see here, make it really hard for consumers to actually communicate with them. And that is a real big trust problem that consumers have. Even if they don't at that point want to talk to you, the feeling that they can is incredibly important for consumers. So uh, can they contact you? And also, can you facilitate that external comparison? They will be doing external comparisons. They will be looking at your brand against others, looking at your current account against others. Can you actually? lead them and guide them in that process, because it will be something that they're doing. And as I say, this, this sort of support piece is extremely important, not just for this trust factor, not just for the health factor, because people will want to, want to talk to you, but also because it's, it's increasingly likely that consumers will just leave if they have an issue. They won't persevere. So if it was a real life situation, you encountered problems on a website while researching, what would you do? 22% of consumers in this would just say, oh, I'd leave and look for another provider. They wouldn't give you any sort of benefit of the doubt. They would just immediately go, yeah, it's too hard. Somebody else will make it easier. So you're losing over a fifth of consumers immediately if you make, uh, if, if you make it hard. Obviously, 30% would look frequently asked questions and help, so it's very important. 18% would look for online web chat. This is a growing percentage. This is growing from around 4% uh, two, three years ago. So it's really important, again, that so you think about offering this. This is obviously not a short-term fix, uh, but it's growing in terms of a, a hygiene factor that consumers are expecting to see. So it's really, really important that you offer 
support and help from consumers because if they don't see it, if they don't, if they need, if they have problems, uh, a considerable percentage of them will just leave. So you've got a things like Barclays, for example. Barclays offering uh, constant contact details uh, around the site. Um, as you go through the site, it's, it's very busy. I'm not saying necessarily this is the, the epitome of design, but you will see as you go through the accounts pages, there's lots of information to contact us. There's constantly offers for a live web chat, start a live web chat immediately. There's the facility to visit a branch, but it's obviously offering the branch locator, so for consumers who would rather do it face to face. And also, very explicitly, call us to open an account. They're making it very clear that this is a phone number. We can can very happily open the account over over the phone. This isn't just for queries. Very happy to talk to you. Also, you can see their opening hours. It's nothing more frustrating for consumers to pick up the phone to try and do something. Got home from work. No, sorry, we're only opening open till six or whatever it is. So they need to tell consumers when you're open till. Um, and also, you can see they've got a separate um, number for existing account holders. Again important in terms of uh, reassignments for consumers. Once I've signed up for you, you're not going to stop caring about me, are you? No, nope, there are phone numbers with opening hours specifically for you. So contact us, constantly available. What they're also doing here is external validation. I said this piece about why would they choose you? Well, there are a number of ways of putting information content that would help consumers make that decision. Obviously, interesting. Uh, so making sure they know that the product suits their needs and you've got all the, the features and functions that they need. But also, it's not just about you shouting about yourself. It's about what have you got in terms of external validation. So you've got here the de facto five-star awards for current account switching. Consumers, uh, consumers being shown here that actually it's really, really simple for, for you to switch to us. Um, obviously, most brands in the market now have got the current account switch guarantee. Uh, but Barclays making a feature of it and saying actually external validation also says that we aren't just signed up to this for, for word of mouth, we are actually doing this. So showing consumers there are other external brands and external um, markers that essentially say, yeah, this is this is, does what it says in the tin. It's not just Barclays shouting about how wonderful they are. Another example here in terms of nationwide, nationwide doing a lot of this, why choose us now? And we saw earlier in the DME they're doing uh, pretty successfully when we come through the sort of quick choice that consumers are making through the DME. Tabs up here, just to draw your attention to obviously our current account, show you what you've got. Compare our accounts. Again, they're explicitly saying, OK, look at the current accounts we have. Let's make it obvious which one suits your needs. Then very explicitly here, why choose us? Why choose Nationwide? Facts about the Nationwide, you may not have heard of us. You may not know much about us, but we are the biggest uh, world's large building society, um, committed to ethical business, etc. So a number of things that they feel make it uh, clear that why they're different and why you would why you would choose those. And then obviously the switching to nationwide very quick and easy. Nationwide current accounts, you do need a bank account, you don't need a bank. Biggest customer satisfaction against our high street competitors. So again, a little bit of external validation, a survey that was uh, conducted that showed that uh, they had the highest proportion of extremely satisfied and very satisfied customers. So again, not just nationwide saying, we're great, we're big, we're uh, the world's largest society. We're also saying we've got external validation of that. It's not just us shouting about ourselves, which banks tend to be pretty good at doing. So what does this mean? Um, first impressions count. Um, how easy is it to take out the, the current account. How do I know you will pay the interest? How do I know it will be easy to extract my money uh, from you? Uh, we saw very important within the DME, uh, definitely pushing up some of those smaller brands through the, the market. Um, as a, a brand, you've got to convince consumers from the beginning that you have a brand that suits their a, a, current account that suits their needs right from the beginning. I don't have to put all the product information on the home page, but the home page has to convince consumers that if I spend a little bit more time with you, you will have uh, a product that suits my needs. And then actually take that a step further. What products do you actually have? How can I be convinced as a consumer that you are meeting my needs? 
help consumers understand what it is you've got, help them compare it. It's very hard at the moment. And then finally, this piece about facilitating decisions, help users help themselves. You won't get a second chance. They will not spend a lot of time persevering through your website to look for this. It's not fun. It's not exciting. There are plenty of other providers in the market that will help them if you don't. So thank you very much for your time this morning. Um, I think it's been a, a short tour of the Q3 DME and DSE current accounts research that we here at Global Reviews uh, have recently conducted on our ongoing research process. If you have any questions, do email me at rebecca.jennings at globalreviews.com. Um, and uh, thank you very much for your time this morning. You are also very welcome to have a copy of the presentation or a copy of the uh, whole webinar. Um, just say, do feel free to, to email me with any questions or requests for the webinar. It just remains for me to say thank you very much for your uh, time this morning. Um, and I hope it's been a, a worthwhile uh, expenditure of your time this morning. Thank you very much. Goodbye.